Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer at Christ the King Anglican Church. Today is Wednesday, June 12th. Our service begins in the prayer book on page 11. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Together we say the Venite. O oh come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. I'll invite our reader to lead us in the psalm and reading this morning. The psalm this morning is first 22 verses of Psalm 105 on page 6. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Tell the peoples what things he has done. Oh, let your heart songs be of him and praise him. And let your speech be of all his wondrous works. Rejoice in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember the marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant and the promise that he made to a thousand generations. Even the covenant that he made with Abraham and the oath that he swore to Isaac. Which he appointed to Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting testament. Saying, to you I will give the land. When there were yet but a few of them, and they were strangers in the land. And they wandered from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another. He allowed no one to do them wrong, but reproved even kings for their sakes. Do not touch my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land and destroyed all the provision of bread. But he had sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold to be a bond servant. Whose feet they hurt in the stocks. They put an iron collar around his neck. Until the time came that his sayings were fulfilled. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and delivered him. The ruler of the people let him go free. He made him lord over his house and ruler of all his possessions. That he might instruct his princes according to his will and teach his elders wisdom. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was as it in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. 
Our reading this morning is from Luke chapter 23, beginning at the first verse. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him, because he had heard about him, and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. So he questioned him at some length, but he made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, and Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then, arraying him in splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day, for before this they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who is misleading the people. And after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man and release to us Barabbas a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection, started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder for whom they asked, but he delivered Jesus over to their will. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle this morning is found on page 19, the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On page 21, we continue together. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. The collect of the day. Grant, O Lord, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your providence, that your church may joyfully serve you in quiet confidence and godly peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Call it for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor run into any danger, and that, guided by your Spirit, we may do what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our prayer focus this morning is for our missionaries. I invite prayers at this time. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you for your care for us and your unending mercies. I would particularly remember the church planting team in our uh, diocese that is trying to not just spread your word, but also start new churches where your word can be expounded and, and proclaimed and people can, can come and be part of your family uh, on a human level. And I just pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless and keep these church little new churches and allow them to prosper uh send your spirit out into our world in our diocese and allow these new churches to grow and to become godly living parts of your body father we lift up um kairos prison ministries thank you for what you've been doing in that realm and what you'll you'll continue to do to um just bring your freedom to those that are captive your true freedom salvation discipleship growth thank you for life quests uh for kids in the same boat that have been caught up in the juvenile system or um are on probation those kinds of things lord pray you bless those ministries thank you for what you're doing Our service this morning concludes on page 26. Would you join me there on page 26? Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together we say the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.